The planet is filled with mysteries that spark our curiosity. We owe much of what we know today about the history of the Earth to those in the past who began to search for answers regarding the reasons for things. The Cray Cretaceous Resinous Interval Research Project, in which the Geological and Mining Institute of Spain is participating together with the University of Barcelona, aims to find the answer to something that has been stirring scientific interest. Why is it that during the Cretaceous period there was a huge production of resin which left hundreds of umber deposits all around the planet? Since its discovery, amber has generated significant interest. The first written references alluding to this gem that is sought after due to its fiery color and transparency date back to the Roman Empire. Prior to this, during the Paleolithic age, humans began to use amber to make beads. Pliny the Elder, one of the first people to mention it, discusses the first ideas about its origin in his work Natural History. He notes that the Greeks called it electron and attributed its formation to the tears shed by Eleides, sisters of the god Phaeton, who was murdered by Zeus. According to Pliny, other Romans, such as Demostratus, thought that amber was formed from lynx urine. We know that amber is derived from resin produced by certain trees. As it flows over trunks and branches, it becomes an effective material for trapping fragments of plants, arthropods, and even small vertebrates. Once the resin seeps out of the tree, it needs to be entombed in an oxygen-free environment, where after the passage of millions of years, it is fossilized, thus preserving its content intact like a little time capsule. The fossils it contains provide fascinating data on the evolution of plants and animals and what the ecology of ancient forests was like. But not all ecosystems favor the formation of an amber deposit. There needs to be a forest with trees that are able to produce large amounts of resin, such as conifers, and that is transported and buried quickly, which is what can happen in deltas and marshes. Interestingly, there is an era of the Earth geological history that has left significantly more amber deposits than others, the Cretaceous. This period is the last of the Mesozoic era and saw an explosion of life on the planet. Terrestrial ecosystems developed that were rich in flora and fauna, plants with flowers, appeared as well as many new types of insects. On dry land, Dinosaurs were the predominant megafauna of the time. For some reason, which is still unknown, during about 54 million years, the forests produced huge amount of resin on an intermittent basis, which would end up forming deposits of amber scattered all over the world. It is precisely the abundant number of fossils found in the amber which provide interesting data about the evolution of plants and animals and the ecology of the ancient Cretaceous forests. What caused this event on a global scale? In Spain, the Cray project seeks to provide answers to these questions in the territory of El Soplao in Cantabria where together with the astounding caves filled with stalactites and stalagmites, a rich deposit of amber has been found. This discovery, although recent, is already of significant importance worldwide, particularly because it contained traces of paleofires, providing evidence that forests of resinous trees caught fire on a recurrent basis. However, to understand the reasons behind a global phenomenon, as many deposits as possible need to be studied in order to obtain all the information that is required to carry out a global statistical study. To do this, as much data as possible needs to be systematically collected from Cretaceous deposits in both terrestrial hemispheres. 
To this end, the Cray Research has gathered together scientists from all over the world. Making use of multiple sources of information, the researchers are working with the ecological niche modeling. By doing a statistical analysis of thousands of pieces of data, this technique is able to recreate where large resin-producing forests were able to thrive using biotic or abiotic factors, which were possibly responsible for this mass production, such as the composition of gases in the atmosphere, volcanism, the average temperature of the planet, sea levels, or the distribution of ocean currents. We know that the levels of greenhouse gases during the Cretaceous period were between four and six times higher than what we have currently, mainly as a result of volcanism. This fact led to an increase in global temperatures on the planet of between 5 and 10 degrees centigrade, encouraging the growth of temperate coniferous forests in latitudes that are today covered in ice. The rise in temperature also led to the poles melting, increasing sea levels by up to 200 meters in some periods. Therefore, in the Cretaceous period, there were very favorable circumstances for triggering the cray. Extensive areas of forest producing resin and depositional environments such as deltas and marshes in which they could become entombed together with other vegetation remnants. But what caused the mass production of resin that would reach us in the form of amber? Based on the observation of the current biology of some species of insects, one of the hypotheses that was raised is that beetle species could perforate the wood of Cretaceous trees, introducing fungi that infected the plant tissues from the tunnels they were creating in the interior of the trunks, thus causing damage to their vascular systems. A plague of borer beetles would explain a high production of resin, but those that behaved in this way very probably did not flourish until the end of the Cretaceous period, as has been deduced by the small amount of specimens trapped in the amber over the Cray period. Thus, we need to find another explanation for the mass production of resin. It cannot be ruled out that other insects, such as thrips and true bugs, could have produced some form of mass damage to the trees, or that other groups of organisms, such as omycetes, could have affected the roots of resinous trees, leading them to sicken and produce resin. Or even that the trees expelled resin to attract insects to ensure pollination. These other groups of insects are found within amber bioinclusions, and some are abundant, such as thrips. Another hypothesis is supported by the increase in atmospheric oxygen during the Cretaceous period, from 21% to 30%. Combined with the high temperatures, this increase in oxygen most certainly encouraged the start and propagation of large fires. Subsequently, as a response to the damage to those trees that were not completely burned, they may have expelled large amounts of resin, as can be seen in the deposit at El Soplao. The amber contains organisms related to this process, and the rock that contains the amber has large quantities of fusionite, that is, the remains of wood fossils, as a result of rapid combustion due to fires. The rising sea levels could also have affected the resinous trees in lowlands. Water stress caused to conifer forests near to the coasts, due to the water salinity, could have led to an increased production of resin. However, in order to gain certainty about the causes of the cray, we have to continue to investigate and do so intensively. Because, as occurred with the ideas put forward by Pliny the Elder, curiosity pushes scientists to question what we thought we knew by comparing data, investigating, ruling out previous ideas and re-examining the evidence. 
it is once again demonstrated that the scientific method together with remarkable developments in technology and the capacity for analyzing large volumes of data in the past few decades are paving the way to try and uncover the great mysteries of life on Earth.